Okay, so for the next two weeks, you guys are going to be doing a drawing of a plaster cast. Normally, if we were in the classroom, we would actually be doing this from life, meaning you would be looking at a real plaster cast and not a photograph. Um, but with distance learning, we're going to have to adjust that and use a photograph. So. Um, in the instructions, I'm going to include the photograph of this plaster cast. If you are able to print it out, I think that's the best way to do it. If you have a printer, if you're not able to print it out, then you're just going to look at your, your screen. Um, once I print it out, I want to draw in my sketchbook the same size, uh, the exact same size as I printed it out. So. As you're working on this, some things that you want to think about. Um, the first is in the beginning stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be drawing light. Now, in my example, I've made the lines way darker than they would actually be so that you can see them a little bit better. But in this first stage, I'm drawing my lines really light and it's called blocking in. And what I'm doing is I'm basically looking at the angles of things, the sizes of things, the placement of things. Um, and I'm not worried about drawing this perfectly. Um, I know that I'm gonna make some changes later, most likely that's why I'm gonna draw everything light. But I'm just trying to get all of the main facial features, the basic shape of the head, the basic shape of the neck. I'm trying to get down as much information as I can so that then I can start comparing back and forth between my drawing and my photograph and trying to make sure that everything is the right size, the right angle, the right placement. So it would be things like when I, when I draw the mouth area, I'm not gonna draw every single detail of the mouth. I'm just gonna kind of like look at the angle. I can actually use my pencil and put it down over the photograph and that shows me the angle that I want to draw that area correctly. And so I'm going to just basically draw that whole front mouth area as a line. Same thing with the nose. What is the angle of the nose? All of these things are really important. Trying to get the angle as accurate as you can. So for each area I'm lightly, again you want to do this lightly, not as dark as I did in this example. Um, I'm just trying to get in the basic shape of everything because then I can start to be like, okay, where is the ear compared to the nose? Where is my ear compared to the nose? Is it in the right place or do I need to adjust it? Where is the side of the eye compared to the mouth? Where is the front of the eye compared to the nose or to the mouth? Is it the same place on my drawing? Where is the shoulder coming out? What's the angle of the shoulder and where is it coming out compared to the chin? Did I put that in the same place? So all over the drawing at this stage, I'm really concentrating on my angles, my sizes of each of my facial features and parts of the head and the neck and the placement compared to everything else. And then once I feel like I have everything blocked in, stage one is going to turn into stage two where now I'm going back and I'm as accurately as I can drawing in all of the facial features. Um, I, still need, I still might need to make some adjustments in size or placement and this would be the time to do that but basically by the end of stage two it should look like the very best line drawing that I can do of the plaster cast from the photo. Um, notice I have not done any shading yet. I always save my shading until I'm happy with my line drawing. I think that it can save you a lot of time. Um, and before I'm gonna start to do my shading, the one last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually draw in where the shadows are, where the highlights are, kind of like give myself almost a coloring book of where all of my shading and values are going to go. So when I get ready to start the shading, now this is my example that I normally use in class. 
um, when I'm actually looking at the real plaster cast, so it's a, it's a little bit off of this photograph. But when I get ready to start the shading, um, I want to try and make my shading as smooth as possible. Notice that the plaster cast is very smooth. Uh, notice that the values are going to be on the lighter side, but I still want to try and see all of the see and in, and include in my drawing all of the subtle little variations. And then as I start to shade, I really want to pay attention to the modeling. And what the modeling would be is, uh, if you look right here in this, this part of the nose, notice that I have this kind of like, sorry, <laughs> this part of the eye. I've got the eyebrow up here. I've got a highlight right on the edge of it. And then it kind of turns into a light value gradually turning into a darker value. It's darker, it's darkest right here. But if I look really close within that, I can actually see that there's two different values in the dark area. And then that kind of like gradually transitions into a medium area. And then as you come up, this medium area turns back into the light. There's another highlight here. There's a dark area and then there's a light area, which is the top of the eyelid and then a dark area, which gradually turns in to kind of like the eye socket. But again, if I look close, I can see a highlight right on the edge of it and then a darker area and then kind of like a medium area as it comes around. So modeling is basically noticing all of the subtle little variations of value and shading within the plaster cast and trying to include them in your shading as accurately as you can. Um, remember that with your shading you want to try and keep your strokes um, close together and overlapping. So that my shading is coming out light and smooth. I haven't, I haven't touched it. A lot of times when I do my shading, I let the pencils blend themselves together. I do not actually use a tortellone or I don't use a blending stump. Again, you have to find the technique that works well for you. So try to make your shading as smooth as you possibly can and then really try and look for those places um, where you have one value gradually transitioning into another. And on your shading you want to try and recreate that gradual transition. That's what's going to make it look round. So you want to see places where there's kind of like a hard defined edge, like this would be an example right here, that edge is pretty defined. Underneath the chin, that edge is pretty defined. And then um, you want to find the areas where the values are uh, gradually transitioning from dark into light or dark into medium into light. That's what's going to make it look round. So you're going to draw and shade the plaster clack plaster cast from this photograph as realistically as you can um, and like I said at the beginning you're going to have two weeks to work on this. At the end of week one you need to take a picture of your progress and upload it on Google Classroom and then at the end of week two you need to take a picture of the finished drawing and upload it onto Google Classroom. Hope you have fun with this. Um, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.